Dreadlock man, with his fierce fists and suspect jump shot, sets his stuff, dollar forty-five sandals, key to bike lock, extra t-shirt, on the bleachers, and holds his hands out for the ball. It's ten in the morning, and Lincoln Wreck is just opened. Sticky's at the free throw line, working out his routine, while all the regulars come swaggering in. Come on, little man, Dreadlock man says. Give up the rock. Sticky throws an around-the-back no-look dime, watches Dreadlock Man rise into the air with his awful form, calves tightening, dreads scattering, eyes poised on the goal, and let go of a sorry-looking line drive. Before he comes back down to the dusty old hardwood, he yells out, Peanut butter! Says it every time he takes a jumper. Peanut butter! That's what he wants everyone to call him, but nobody does. When the ball ricochets off the side of the backboard, entirely missing the rim, he says what any man would say. Hey, yo, stick, let me get one more. Hawk passes through the door, from sunny day into old dark gym. A big black man. Wears bright wraparound shades and baggy shorts, the new Jordans on his size 16 feet. Hawk has a little money to his name. He's one of the few Lincoln Wreck ballers who does. Some of the regulars say he made a few movies a couple years back. A stunt double, maybe, or security on the set. If you look quickly, get a fast profile shot, you might think he looks like someone. Hey, yo, dreadlock man, he says, megaphoning a hand around his mouth. I got five says you bricked that shot. The whole side of his shaved head flexes as he chews hard at his gum. Dreadlock man takes a couple awkward dribbles and rises again. Peanut butter? This time, his ball arcs through the air without backspin, a Phil Necro knuckleball that thuds off the back of the rim and drops into Sticky's waiting hands. Damn, Dreadlock, man, your shot straight broke! Hawk falls into the bleachers laughing, goes to lace up his new sneaks. Other dudes come strutting into the gym, slapping hands, slinging their bags onto the bleachers and talking trash. Sticky high dribbles to the other end of the court, spins in an acrobatic reverse, he points up at an invisible crowd. Dreadlock man watches, hands on hips, yells out, Come on, stick, we trying to shoot down here. A couple other balls get tossed into the rotation. Everybody's shooting short set shots to get warm, stretching out stiff shoulders and legs. Most of these cats are just out of bed. A couple have pulled themselves off a piece of cardboard on court, too, having spent the night where all the homeless stay. Lincoln Rec functions both as a great place to hoop and a small-time homeless shelter. Sometimes, things overlap. Sticky comes dribbling down from the other side of the court with his left hand. He goes right up to Dante, who's just walked in carrying a duffel bag, the best player in the gym, and shoots a soft 20-footer over his outstretched hand. Dante and Sticky watch the ball smack both sides of the rim and bounce off toward the east sideline. Go get that brick, Stick, Dante says. Bring it back my way so you can watch a real shooter. Dante played ball overseas for six or seven seasons. He's slick with both the rock and his mouth. Some cats say, Watch it, man, to newcomers. Dude will beat you two times. Then they sit back down and clown those who brush off their warning. Told you, dog. Didn't I tell him, Big J, when he walked his sorry ass in here? Yeah, I heard it, OP. I was sitting right there when you said it. Dante's skin shines black as night, and his hair is scarecrow wild the devil's growth, fingers out from his chin. Sticky skips a bounce pass to Dante, who pats it around his back a little, through his legs some, close to the ground with his tips like a magician, and then fires up a 25-footer that nestles in the gut of the net. You see how I play the strings, young stick? He laughs a little and nods his head. Just like that, baby boy. That's string music. Dante struts off the court with hip-hop rhythm, brushes past a businessman who stopped in to watch these black guys play, arms folded, subtle smile, and lies down near the bleachers to stretch his 37-year-old back. This is Lincoln Rec on a Thursday, midsummer. It's the best place in L.A. to ball. Some sports mag even did a cover story about it a few years back. Gym manager Jimmy's gold tooth smile spread right across pages 72 and 73. The article talked about how one court houses the homeless and the other accommodates the fearless. How Michael Cage sometimes shows up. 
Cliff Levingston, Eddie Johnson. Bill Walton was quoted saying, It's the sweetest run in all of Southern California. The gym is in the middle of a pretty good-sized park adjacent to some museums and business offices. The place gets so dark that when you've been in there a while and you go to peek your head outside to check your car, your eyes freeze up and hide like you've just stared in the sun. Games go to 11 straight up. No win by two here. Fouls are called by the offense. The ball they use is dead weight. The leather has soaked up so much sweat from so many different dudes over the years, it takes a lot of legs just to get it up to the rim. Other than that, there's a constant sour smell in the air, a no-dunking sign that nobody pays attention to, and an unwritten rule that all who step foot through the gym doors with the intention of getting on the court better come with their A-game. If you're going to run with the big dogs, the article says, you can't pee like a puppy. Sticky does what he does every day. He stands on the free throw line with his ball. Simple as that. It doesn't matter who says what to him, if a ball caroms out his way or nothing. He's not moving. He puts his rock between his knees and goes to tuck his shirt in. Pulls his shirt back out and retucks. Pulls it out and retucks. Ball between his knees, watching everybody shoot warm up jumpers. Pulls out and retucks. Pulls out and retucks. There are 18, 19 guys by this time shooting around, running a quick game of 21 to get loose. This is the only way Sticky can make sure he finds himself balling in the first game. Pulls his shirt out and retucks. Pulls out and retucks. He's 17 and white. These guys are men. Even though his game has improved from here to the 405, and most regulars swear they'd make room on their squad, there's still that thought in the back of his head that he might not get picked up. He can't kick the aftertaste of that first month he started showing up, way back before he was a sophomore. It's only been a year and some change, but any baller would swear it's been longer. He'd cruise into the gym wearing all his state-issued gear, a bottle of tap water and a bag of granola in his backpack, and the kid wouldn't get in one game all day. He'd just sit up in the bleachers like the 13th man, feeling like a scrub, headphones on his ears and basketball in his hands, figuring out on the sly who he could take absorbing the rhythms of squeaking sneaks and slapping hands, mouths left running all day, and the rap of body against body in the paint. 